shortly, but firstly, I just want to get your reaction on what Grant Shapps just said to us there. Do you believe that the boss of PO should go right now? Yes, I do agree with Grant Shapps. I mean, what has happened um, is an outrage uh, happening at an incredibly tough time uh, for people with rising inflation um, anyway. But I have to say, I also think that the government changing the law around fire and rehire was unacceptable in the first place. And I think it set up the circumstances in which uh, ordinary hardworking people could be treated um, in this way. We will scrutinise the legislation that he says he's coming forward with, but frankly, it shouldn't have taken this in the first place. And Grant Sharp, sir, when I spoke to him earlier, was calling for cross-party support to get the process through Parliament um, quicker. Will Labour support that? Well, let's look at the bill that he says that he's bringing forward. I don't think we've seen the detail. Uh, we'll scrutinise it. Um, and, of course, we'll support uh, where we can, but I would be surprised if we aren't asking quite searching questions um, uh, uh, as a result of this in the first place. In terms of when Mr Shapps was aware of um, the situation in Ukraine, we're getting some conflicting news. Um, the boss um, yesterday in front of MPs said actually Mr Shapps was made aware of this in November. He has denied that. Um, but if we do get information later on that says the opposite, that actually any revelations come out that says actually Mr Shapps did um, indeed um, know about this um, in November, as, um, um, as was said to MPs yesterday, do you think that will make his role untenable? Well, yes, because he would have lied. Uh, and we have to live in a country where we expect um, ministers uh, in the event that they're found not to be telling the truth to resign and to go. Um, so I hope that is not the situation for Grant Snaps, but if he's in that situation, I'm afraid uh, he would have to go. Um, can you spell out for us what Labour would do then to close the loopholes which allowed 800 people to be sacked on the spot via video? Labour's been campaigning for a very, very long time. And this came up during the pandemic when we had other major employers uh, sack people summarily um, and then rehire people uh, at significantly lower rates. We've been campaigning supported uh, by many of the unions on fire and rehire, uh, and we would absolutely outlaw that practice. That's been absolutely crystal clear now um, for many, many months indeed. Let's move on now to matters concerning um, Ukraine and what's Labour's position on tanks and planes being given to the country? Look, I think that it was absolutely right yesterday for Jan Stoltenberg, for Joe Biden and for others to set out very, very clearly that we would continue to support Ukraine with lethal weapons um, to deal with the assault um, that they are now facing. Um, I think that it's the assessment of NATO allies, and I'm here in Germany uh, uh, speaking to the Germans uh, about about this. It's, it's the assessment across NATO that actually it's anti-tank missiles and it's anti-air weaponry uh, that's hugely important. There are huge logistics involved with supplying tanks and supplying aircraft that the Ukrainians themselves are equipped to use at this stage, given that um, Vladimir Putin has not got control of the skies across Ukraine. It's the ability to take down um, uh, uh, aircraft where they are seen and absolutely to deal with tanks that's required and that missile equipment has come from the United Kingdom and it's come, of course, from the United States. Should we commit to the 1% of NATO firepower that uh, President Zelensky has asked for? Well, look, I think that um, broadly President Zelensky has been pleased with the response that he's got from the UK. There are different capabilities across the 30 NATO countries, all of them assessing what more they can do uh, at this time. I think it's hugely important to remember that Vladimir Putin has not met his military objectives. He thought effectively that this war would be over by now. And what he's met is dogged resistance 
and Ukrainians equipped to deal with the threat that they are facing. Uh, we have now got to gird ourselves um, for more of this over many weeks and sadly many months. And of course, you've heard um, the real concerns about the use of chemical weapons um, and the scenario planning that NATO allies are doing if that eventuality were to come to pass. And um, very shortly, we're waiting to hear from President Joe Biden, who will be speaking alongside Ursula von der Leyen. Um, is Ukraine right when it says that the West acted too slow when it came to um, sanctions? Well, the Labour Party had been pushing the UK government uh, on sanctions at every single stage, and there is more to do, uh, more oligarchs to name, more to do in dealing with with family members, more to do with addressing issues at companies' house, more to do with more sectors of the economy, continuing uh, to see much more banks uh, cut out effectively. This is Russian banks of the international system. So yes, Labour would say that there is more to do on sanctions and that we have moved um, too slowly. But of course, we recognise that there were more uh, commitments made by the government in the last few days, and that we are seeing, for example, the ruble falling, um, currency uh, problems now in Russia, reserves being cut, and that is as a result of the united action across EU uh, and, and including the UK.